I've noticed in the Rust building meta that there's been a propensity for base designers to build these gigantic, huge bases that are 100 rockets to main loot, you know, 90 rockets to main loot, 150 rockets to main loot, and the bases are absolutely gigantic. They have multiple TCs, and they do their job well. They have sound engineering principles. The building techniques used are remarkable oftentimes, but they all share a similar issue, and it's that they're difficult to build. You have to have, there's terrain requirements and the upkeep is just insane. You know, some of these bases I've seen on Sanctuary, you know, 50,000 metal frags upkeep, uh, 70,000 metal frags upkeep, 30K metal frags upkeep, or 60K stone, 500 HQM. It's, so th the bases are doing their job, but if you're not a Zerg or a, or a huge group that grinds all day, it's not gonna last. Y'all know how Rust goes. A lot of times you'll get into a group like that and you get the base up and then it lasts about a week and then everybody quits because nobody wants to grind for the upkeep anymore. So you get this tremendous amount of protection, but the upkeep is just insane. And sometimes you can't even get the base up because it's so hard to build because it's rust <laughs> and you don't, so a lot of times you don't have time to do all the tricks necessary to get a base designed exactly perfectly. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's bases out there that are small, like this 2x2 two two I'm looking at, and they can be extraordinarily strong. This 2x2 two two that I designed, you can see it's it, it's a 2x2 two two at the center. It's got hunting comer on the outside, and it, it spans out a little bit on the four corners, but it, it's still a 2x2 two two at heart. It's got super low upkeep, and this is a 90 rocket base. If you want the main loot from this base, you're going to spend close to 100 rockets and potentially over 100 rockets. The upkeep is something like 5k metal, 2000 stone, and 100 HQM. That's doable by a solo, a, a dedicated solo. Absolutely doable by a duo or a trio. And you get the protection of one of these giant clan bases but you have the small footprint, you can build it basically anywhere, there's no special tricks required, and the upkeep is absolutely manageable for most Rust players. So let's take a look at it. We come in, we have Mr. Horsey here, because horses are amazing in Rust. I keep meaning to make a horse video that just explains just how good horses are. You're gonna see one of the reasons in this video. And we go into the base, and... It's just a base, right? Here's some lockers. Here's some storage. <laughs> Here's the the main loot boxes and our workbench. And we've got garage doors and it's a rust base. And who cares, right? All we've been having upstairs. We can grow stuff and we can store things. And it's great. Yay. But like most of my bases, this one has a trick. First off, take a look at it from the outside. How would you raid this base? I know how I would raid it. I'd go through the damn front door because the whole outside of it is metal and it's got a sheet metal door here, a few doors here, and you're into the main two by two. You're into the main living area. I'd absolutely go through the front door and that's intentional. That's where we want them to go. We want them to go through the front door to come in here and take our gear sets. You know, you can have this as a loot room if you'd like. Take the, the loot from here, take the loot from here, and then get out. And then they leave. But the secret to this base is in what they can't see. And that's the whole point of this base being so strong, is what the enemy can't see and doesn't think about. Within each of these four corners, these squares here, are suicide bunkers. So I'm going to clip through the ceiling here and show you. Here's one of them. You spawn here, get you know, you or your teammate to spawn in here, you store your best loot in here. But you'll notice there's no drop boxes. There's no barbecues. How do you get the loot in here? I'm gonna show you in a second. So there's one. Here's another one. Here's the TC. You can see how low the upkeep is. 1500 stone, 4700 metal, 115 HQM. Put more loot in here, and you can you can design this loot room however you want to. Again, no drop boxes, nothing. Go in here, same thing, same one. Look in here. So we've got these four loot rooms. 
these four loot rooms on the outer edge of the base. One, two, three, four. It's really important to note that they're away from each other. One's here, one's over here, one's over here, and one's over here. So if you're going to raid this base, if you're going to rocket raid it, which is how most people would do it, first off, they're not going to come through the side. They're going to go through the front door. But even if they want, even if they want to come through the side, all right, go ahead. Eight rockets to get through the sheet metal here, and now you're going to need another 15 to get through the armored wall. And guess what? That's one of the four loot rooms. Now you have another one. And no, you can't splash it. You can try. You can load the space up on Sanctuary if you want to. No, you can't splash it. It's impossible to splash with the rockets. It's too, they're too far apart. Here's another loot room. Another 15 plus 8 rockets. And then another 8 plus 15 rockets to get this, this loot room. And then a fourth one. And that's not even counting the fact that they're going to start by going through the doors. So how many rockets to get through this door, this door, this door, this door, this door, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Then they find out, I mean, they're probably going to leave after that. But if they don't leave, if they're like, wait, this base is tricky. Let's raid the rest of it. Okay, I hope they brought another 70 to 90 rockets with them because that's how much it's going to take to get the other four loot rooms. And this is a 2x2. Two two. There's no mistaking this. This is a 2x2 two two that takes close to 100 rockets to get your loot. The key to this is you have to separate your loot in these four rooms. So if you have 10,000 so far, you need to put 2,500. You know, it doesn't have to be exact, obviously. The point is that you want to s separate out your loot into these four loot rooms. Make sure, don't put like all your explosives in one room. You want to split everything everywhere, all the good stuff everywhere. So there's no way for them to get all the loot without burning through all of their rockets to get it. One other option that I think is super devious, it's, it's, there's a little bit of risk involved, but it's extraordinarily uh, devious, is put all your best loot in one of these rooms. You know, pack it up with barbecues and small boxes to maximize the space. And put all your best loot in just one of the rooms. And then put the barbecues and small boxes in the other three rooms as well. But the other three are empty. So only one of the four rooms has anything in it at all. So that means there's a 75% chance that the enemy is going to go into the wrong room if they raid this base. If, even if they raid through the honeycomb into the armored the armored loot room, there's a 75% chance they're going to get into the wrong room first. And do you know how demoralizing it is to spend you know, 15 plus 8 rockets, 23 rockets to get nothing in return to find an empty loot room? Most people are going to leave at that point because they don't know what's up. Maybe they, you know, how how does this work? Did they not have enough loot to, to put in here? Are they trying to trick us? They don't know what's going on. They're, they're probably going to leave. So you could do it that way. That's it's. There's more risk involved, but I actually think it's uh, it's the the if the the chance of them finding your actual loot room is lower is really low. And the chance of you losing your best loot is is much lower, but there is some risk involved. If they do blow into that one room, you know, you're going to lose your best stuff. But it, it's very unlikely that's going to happen. You know, 75% chance they're going to choose the wrong one. Now, the question on everyone's mind right now is, okay, but how do you get... <laughs> how do you get the loot in here? There's no drop boxes. There's no uh, barbecues. There's no glitches. There's no... Well, I'll tell you with Mr. Horsey. I haven't seen... I'm going to spawn a new horsey. Sometimes when you mount a horse in Sanctuary, it kicks you out. I'm just going to spawn a new horsey here. Hello there, friend. You fill the horsey up with loot. Put all your loot on Mr. Horsey. Hello, horsey. Da -da 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 -da. Take all my gunpowder and rockets, and I'm going to use you to get into my super secret loot room i haven't seen anybody else on youtube do this if you're if you've been doing this i, I think people are either keeping it a secret or they haven't thought about it yet but the what makes this particularly good and it's really really good by the way is the fact that you're passing loot through two layers of honeycomb one this is the first layer and then two 
Hello, Mr. Horsey. You know what? Next time you shake your head, I think I will steal your loot. I just moved loot through two layers of honeycomb, and the enemy has no idea that there's anything back here. No drop boxes, no barbecues, nothing at all. All you need is a horsey who is well fed and cooperative and some saddlebags to do the job. You can even do this by yourself. You move your horsey in, and then you, you suicide bunker spawn in here and move it yourself, and then you put Mr. Horsey back. I've been using this trick for mm, probably six months to a year now, and it lets you do these crazy builds that no one ever thinks of. Like, I've built things like farm bases where you know it's just a, a farm and and you know the planter boxes here and the you know the sprinkler system and everything and then over here you have the uh the the tc room the uh, double honeycomb tc room with all your loot in it and then Whenever it's time to move your stuff, you just put more, clip Mr. Horsey through the wall here and move all your loot into your freaking farm base. Your farm base. So this this base is used to uh, grow pumpkins and to store your life savings. And it's never been raided before. Wipe after wipe after wipe after wipe after wipe. Nobody raids farm bases. Nobody raids 2 by 2 sprinkler system farm bases. Store all your best stuff in there. And now you have an external TC that also has all your best loot in it that nobody's ever going to touch. And then if you want to get you know super sneaky with it in a, a base like this, you can do that. And you can use this principle any, in any base design you want. Anywhere that you can have two, two layers of honeycomb, and then you have this, it has to be in this configuration. You can't, if there's a wall right here, for example, instead of the garage door, if there's a wall, it doesn't work. It needs to be the, the triangle and square configuration. And then you just get Mr. Horsey over there in the corner, and you pass your loot through two layers of honeycomb. You don't have to do any any pixel gap glitches. You don't have to have any any uh, half moon uh, tricks. You don't have to have any any floor stacking, wall stacking, n nothing. It's it's any base configuration you want can employ this trick. That's what makes it so powerful. So. Obviously, this trick is doable with drop boxes and with the barbecue glitch, but you're going to be passing usually through one layer of honeycomb at a time, which is really annoying. I know that some of the... I think Adder posted a video on how to have a... a uh, how to pass through two layers of honeycomb with the pixel... the pixel gap glitch, which is doable, but it's... it's a, it, it's a little difficult to build in certain base configurations, and it also it requires a square honeycomb instead of a triangle one. At least I haven't been able to make it work with a triangle one yet. So this is it, it's the versatility of this trick is what makes it so powerful. Now I'm gonna raid this base and show you that it really does take 90 rockets to get all the main loot from this base. You can fast forward if you like, but. I, you know, you're, you're gonna you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. That this is a two by two with low upkeep that takes almost a hundred rockets to get main loot. It's all about loot separation, friends. Extraordinarily powerful stuff. how they would read it.
and there we go. 102 rockets. Obviously, I was a little, a little loose with them at times, but you get the idea. This base is extraordinarily strong, and there's no way to make it easy. There's no way to come in from the top, come in from the side, splash, get all the loot at once. There's just no way to do it. You're going to spend an absolute load of rockets to raid this base, and the upkeep is basically nothing. So I hope you find the principles in this video intriguing, and I'll see you all in the next video.